Grace and peace to you from God who loves you. Amen. I'm Kyle Johnson. I'm vicar at Grace Lutheran Church in Wilmington, Illinois. And on behalf of our entire congregation, I welcome you to today's worship service. If you're receiving a link to this video from our office's email list, attached to that email is a PDF of today's service for you to print out and participate in the various readings and prayers during the service. Also attached to that email is a link to another video. See, I'm not preaching today. Bishop Jeffrey Clements of the Northern Illinois Synod of the ELCA recorded a sermon for his ministerial leaders to use on this the second Sunday of Easter. If you do not have access to uh, the PDF or to the link to that uh, video, please just email me. The, the address would be pastor at gracewilm.org and I would be happy to send you a copy of the bulletin and the link to Bishop Clements's uh, sermon. And finally, we have not had a newsletter go out since this whole pandemic got started. And it's our hope to send one out, a sort of special edition, if you will, within the next week or so. I would very much like to include stories, testimonies from various people involved in the congregations, and also this uh, having them address sort of the following ideas. What does God mean to you? What has Jesus done for you? What brings you to grace and what keeps you coming to grace? Uh, if you are a volunteer and serve on committees and do things around the building, why do you do that? Sure, you know, people don't do that unless they get some sense of fulfillment out of it or there's a story behind it. And we'd like to hear your story about why you serve in this way. You can email these stories and testimonies to pastor at gracewilm.org as well within the next couple of days, and we'd be happy to include them in this newsletter. And with that, we begin our worship service with a thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the waters of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Yeah. 
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This seems to be a good day to replace the regular prayer of the day with a prayer written by Martin Luther that fits the theme of doubt and our need for God to nurture our faith. Let us pray. Behold, Lord, an empty vessel that needs to be filled. My Lord, fill it. I am weak in the faith. Strengthen me. I am cold in love. Warm me and make me fervent, that my love may go out to my neighbor. I do not have a strong and firm faith. At times I doubt and am unable to trust you altogether. O oh Lord, help me. Strengthen my faith and trust in you. In you I have sealed the treasure of all I have. I am poor, you are rich, and came to be merciful to the poor. I am a sinner, you are upright. With me there is an abundance of sin. In you is the fullness of righteousness. Therefore I will remain with you, of whom I can receive, but to whom I may not give. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Acts, the second chapter. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, and you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him, that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, of, and of, of that all of us are witnesses. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. <clears throat> The psalm is Psalm 16. 
Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is in the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods, never take their names upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup, it is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because God is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. My heart therefore is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The second reading comes from the first chapter of First Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Bishop Clements is going to read the gospel lesson today, which is from the 20th chapter of John. But I would like to read it using a different translation, the New Living Translation. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, We have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, 
put my fingers into them, and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were again together, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and look at my hand. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and all places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Open the doors we close, O God, when we fear those who worship you in different ways. Guide us to unity and harmony, so that we may come to respect and cherish our commonalities. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Open the paths we ignore, O God, when we prioritize financial gain and convenience over listening to the groaning of the earth. Inspire all to care for the world you have made, so that living things may thrive. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Open the rooms we lock, O God, to those who live without a homeland or a place of safety. We pray that generous nations offer refuge and peace for all. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Open the hearts we close, O God, to the cries of those in pain. We pray for those isolated physically or emotionally through incarceration, addiction, mental illness, chronic suffering, grief, and all in need. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Open the ways of love, O God, in the pursuit of peace throughout the world, and bless the efforts of missionaries, healthcare professionals, activists for women and children, and relief workers, especially those who find themselves in harm's way, and especially those caring in any way for COVID-19 sufferers. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. People of God, for what else would we pray? for my parents and my sisters and my nieces and nephews. For my friend Care. For Bill and Steve. For Beth and Dawn.
Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Open the way to eternal life, O God, as we remember those who have died in faith. Free us from the fear of death, that we, em that we embrace the peace you have promised. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. This third part of our liturgy begins with the collection of an offering which is brought forward to the altar along with the bread and wine that will be used in communion. People all over the country have been discussing the best ways to give their offerings to their churches during this unique time. For donations to Grace Lutheran, one may of course send donations in the mail, as volunteers check our mailbox regularly. Another option is to set up donations electronically. There are a number of ways this can be done, but the easiest for me is to use my bank's bill pay feature. It is very, very easy to set up a one-time or an automatically repeating contribution. And my bank even pays the postage. Pretty much every bank now has this option. If you already use your bank's website to pay bills, just add Grace as a new recipient. If not, consider calling your bank and setting up something with them. For all those who continue to support the mission of the church through offerings, both financially and through their gifts of time and effort, we offer up this prayer. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with many gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Say hi to the nice people. Hi. Oh, that's a big yawn. Yes, it was. <laughs>